Hi, everyone. My name is Vika. I'm a director of product marketing here at ThoughtSpot. Um, well, so today, all B2B applications are data apps. They store and process a lot of data. And users expect these applications to offer analytics to help them get value out of their data. But here's the thing. Curious users need to ask a series of questions before they can derive real insights. And when they're in an app, they don't have analysts or developers to help them ask those questions. They're just on their own. And for users to really get insights, they need analytics to be self-service and interactive. Otherwise, the app would spark users' curiosity, but leave them unsatisfied. But it's not easy to build self-service interactive analytics into apps. And adoption of analytics apps today is actually quite low because most companies haven't built those apps or haven't found the resources to keep their users engaged yet. Next slide, please. So this leaves product leaders in a bind. They generally have two options to build analytics. One is that they can stand up a development team and build their own, which requires really significant investment over the years. Or two, they can embed visualizations from a traditional BI vendor. In both scenarios, they're likely going to end up with static dashboards, you know, something like what you see on the left here. Static dashboards are just curiosity dead ends because they only answer predefined questions asked by someone else. And stack dashboards frustrate users because users can't ask the questions that they want. And they frustrate developers because developers are already bogged down by endless backlog, backlog of customer requests to make new dashboards. That's a pretty vicious cycle. And that's where ThoughtSpot is different. With ThoughtSpot everywhere, you can say goodbye to the frustrations of static dashboards and hello to interactive insights embedded right into your app. Next slide. So what is ThoughtSpot Everywhere? Um, I recognize this is probably new for, for most of you on the call with us. Um, so just for a bit of background, ThoughtSpot Everywhere offers all of ThoughtSpot's capabilities packaged with the developer-centric features that make ThoughtSpot really easy to embed. With our flexible APIs, you can embed as many or as little of ThoughtSpot's capabilities as you want. Um, so a few examples of that. Um, using our visualization APIs, you can embed our interactive live boards. So you can replace those static dashboards that aren't allowing users to ask questions with something really interactive. Um, with our search APIs, you can embed the full power of exploratory search, and you'll be seeing that um, in action in the demo later. And then using our actions API, you can trigger custom actions and have other apps act on the insights that you generate in ThoughtSpot. From the developer playground, developers can access these APIs through a low-code SDK and interactive development environment. I'll, uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about how to get into that developer playground in a bit. And then we also have ThoughtSpot modeling language, which enables you to create, replicate, and iterate data models with simple scripts. And since ThoughtSpot integrates natively with cloud data platforms, you don't need to replicate data. You just connect ThoughtSpot to the database, and you can immediately get results in the app. Next slide. So what makes ThoughtSpot Everywhere different from other embedded analytics platforms? Well, the first thing is search and live boards. The interactivity and flexibility of embedded search and live boards is giving users a new way to get answers to all those questions that dashboards just weren't satisfying. The second is actions. The key thing here is really about having extensibility in your app. So imagine bringing data insights directly into your customers' favorite business apps and helping them drive smarter actions and unlock more value. And finally, the developer experience. Thoughts But Everywhere is designed to give developers the ultimate building experience with flexible APIs and easy customizations. Next slide. Embedding Thoughts But Everywhere gives your app a truly differentiated experience from what you can build or buy. Your app users get true self-service interactivity so that they can ask any question, anytime, anywhere. Um, search lets them ask any question of their data and live boards allow them to drill anywhere into their visualizations. And because users can ask their own questions, your developers don't have to worry about tweaking dashboards for anyone. Next slide. And after they've asked all the questions that they need to get valuable insights in the app, they can take action directly from the app with their favorite business apps. Um, you know, anything from Slack to Salesforce to Box, whatever your most popular business apps are. 
Um, so a few examples of that, you can list, uh, you can create a list in Google Sheets directly from Thoughts About Everywhere. You can update opportunities in Salesforce. You can send a Slack message to IT. Um, the options are really pretty endless. Um, and ultimately it's just about doing more with your insights and getting more extensible business value. Next. And then lastly, Thoughts Whatever helps developers develop rapidly. Using the low code developer playground, you can embed analytics in your app in minutes. Developers are the most valuable resource in any software company and making your developers more productive and happy directly impacts your company's productivity and growth. That's really the bottom line. Uh, next. Right. And finally, all of this is powered with the speed and scale of the cloud. That's what cloud connects to your data live with Embrace so that you can get the most timely insights. You just connect to the data and start searching quickly. It's all live queried. Okay, and then I just have one more slide before we hand it off to David or to Matt. All right, so just to wrap up a few of these things that we've been learning about, this is an architectural representation of the ThoughtSwap platform, which is purpose built from the ground up for search, ease of use, scale, and governance. I thought it'd be helpful to kind of see how, how the whole thing is put together. Um, and at the bottom, you'll see the most common cloud data sources, warehouses, and data lakes uh, that we connect to by pushing down queries via live query. Snowflake, of course, is one of our most popular ones. Now, once you connect to these sources and select the relevant tables, we index the data fully, not just the metadata, but the data values as well. This makes it easy to ask questions and get answers at the most granular detail without having to move data out of these sources. You can also create a logical data model called the worksheet to model your data for search. You can bring data sets together, create calculated metrics, update metadata descriptors, and more. Now, a couple things that I want to highlight in here, Search IQ, which you've heard about um, a bit in the previous slides, this is the technology that drives our search engine. It handles complex queries across data sets, it has intelligent type ahead as you type character by character, and it uses usage-based ranking to generate the most relevant and personalized search results. The other side of this is Spot IQ. This is our AI engine that generates automated insights on the data to uncover and rank insights from massive amounts of data. On top of the key ThoughtSpot capabilities that let you search to analyze data and create visualizations is a set of product builder tools that help you build your apps and embed ThoughtSpot. So this includes things like a comprehensive set of APIs, a JavaScript SDK, the ability to create custom actions, and a developer playground where you can tinker with your code. Um, well, in, in a nutshell, that is ThoughtSpot, ThoughtSpot Everywhere. Um, with that, I'm going to hand it off to Matt to tell us more about Snowflake. <laughs> Much better. So um, we, you know, Snowflake has about 54, 5,500 customers today, and, and a vast majority of those have built some type of application on Snowflake. We actually have um, a few hundred that have actually built customer-facing applications and products on us as, as well. And when we're talking to these companies, um, we see the same challenges come up over and over again. One, how do we get product to market very quickly? Two, how do we continue to innovate uh, to differentiate ourselves in the market? And how do we do all of this while still maintaining our margins and, and, and profitability? And the challenge of, of being able to do all of this is that we find most people are spending their time doing the undifferentiated tasks, choosing technology stacks, standing up servers, um, you know, loading software, uh, moving data around, uh, just a lot of tasks that don't actually create new, new value for, for a specific product. And so Snowflake takes a, a very different approach to this. Next slide. So the hallmark of Snowflake is that we are simplified architecture that allows you to really operate a single platform and just to be clear, when we talk about single platform, you know, there's still other components that do need to talk to Snowflake. But ideally, if we can reduce the number of technologies required to, to run applications from, say, 16 down to four, it vastly underburdens the, the team trying to drive these applications and allows them to innovate and provide new value. Next slide. So the reason we're able to do this is in, in handle these multitude of workloads is because of our simplified architecture, as mentioned. Uh, first and foremost, Snowflake is cloud agnostic, meaning not only do we support all three major public cloud providers, 
but are also interoperable between cloud providers and regions themselves. Uh, from there, once we establish which cloud we're starting on, we have a centralized storage uh, layer for the architecture. Here we store one copy of data and we support both structured data as well as semi-structured data like JSON, Avro, XML, and Parquet, as well as fully unstructured data. What's great about this is once I have data centralized in one location, I can now open up access to that data through any number of compute resources that I wanna run. The key here is that each compute source is independently scalable uh, as well as isolated from the other, other compute clusters. Meaning if I need to set up continuous uh, data loading for my application, I need to have very responsive customer dashboards and I wanna embed ML and AI into the, the, the application. I can do all of these processes, isolate to their own compute clusters. So everyone's seeing the same data at the same time, but there's no performance contention. And all of this is intelligently managed by the cloud services layer so that you don't have to spend developer time optimizing queries, uh, partitioning data, um, running encryption, all of that is taken care of by Snowflake. Next slide. What's really unique about Snowflake is we are a multi-tenant solution that opens up this opportunity of the data cloud. And in essence, the data cloud allows our customers to share data between each other and with their partners, open up many new opportunities. So for example, we have a data marketplace where data can be sourced uh, for new application builds, as well as you can list data on that market to monetize it. Um, when you have a specific customer who wants to combine data from the application with their own internal data, we can do a direct data share to allow that functionality. You can even spin up uh, accounts on behalf of your, your customers um, if they want to do their own customer reporting on top of the data that the application serves. Next slide. And lastly, um, you know, we, we don't expect you to necessarily have to do this on your own. Um, so if you are thinking about building an application or a product on top of Snowflake that you want to take to market, we have a partner program called Powered by Snowflake um, that provides additional resources for you at no charge that allow you to do three things. One, we have technical architects that will help you from a design and build perspective to make sure you're adhering to best practice design patterns as you look to build out that application or optimize it. The second piece is making sure we can help grow the business by doing different go-to-market activities, whether it's uh, press releases and PR type activity, um, event speaking slots, or even potential sales alignment. Lastly, anytime we have a support issue when a product is built on us, um, any issue with Snowflake is amplified to the customer base. So we have a specialized support team that handles uh, these application environments uh, with our customers to make sure we can drive faster issue resolution. And with that, I will turn it back over to Vicki, or sorry, Vicka. Thanks, David. Um, Ronnie, let's go to the next slide. Sorry, just one second, a little bit of lag on my end. All right, got it. Uh, thanks, Matt. So in a few minutes, we're going to, there we go, I'm back on video. <laughs> in a few minutes, we're going to see a great demo built by HashMap. But first, I actually want to take a few minutes to recognize some of our joint customers who have built really great embedded analytics apps um, that have had a big impact on their organizations and their customers. So you can see a few of their logos here. These are some of our joint customers with Snowflake. Um, and we have some really interesting use cases across so many different industries. Um, Harry, for example, in the UK has an analytics app for the service industry. Um, carbon Statement is actually using analytics to help cut carbon emissions. Um, and DRC works with educational institutions on student performance optimization. So, you know, it's really a testament to how embedded analytics, embedded analytics um, can make an impact in almost any industry, any use case. Um, so I, I think those are very interesting. Um, and there's one more use case that I actually would like to go into a little more depth on. Um, Ronnie, if we can see the next slide. Um, so I'm not sure if everyone's familiar with Verisk. Verisk is a data analytics and risk assessment firm. They mostly work with customers in the insurance, natural resources, financial services sectors. Um, and they're using Snowflake and ThoughtSpot to give their customers direct self-serve access to data 
that helps claim professionals catch errors, report on progress, and benchmark performance. Um, and with embedded analytics, they're actually able to give this kind of self-service access to their users on a massive scale, up to 90,000 users, which saves them making 2,500 customer reports every month. So that's a ton of time back to analysts and developers. Um, and the users are actually able to get answers in minutes instead of days or a week now and keep exploring from their starting point. Um, this has helped reduce their claim life cycle by over 90%, going down from six months to two weeks. Um, so there's really benefits across the board with, with a use case like this. And you can actually see a, an example of what their embedded product looks like in the screen here. So uh, this exact analysis screen kind of shows ThoughtSpot embedded into their product. So you can see that with something like the search bar, but it's their branding, their logo on top. So it's within the, the Verisk skin. Um, and that's just kind of a sample of, of what this could look like in, in any company's app. Um, and with that, I think it's time to see HashMap's demo. All right, when we think of ThoughtSpot, some may think reporting engine, but to me, it's really more of an answer engine. Okay, I stole that verbiage from ThoughtSpot itself, of course, because the term answers is what's created when you perform a search. And notice I, notice I said search and not query. So instead of like searching articles, blogs, or websites, uh, ThoughtSpot is searching your data sets. And kind of like we stated before, it puts that search engine look and feel on top of your data. And today I'm going to try to demo uh, the ThoughtSpot Everywhere embedded features. So now ThoughtSpot Everywhere is truly taking the ThoughtSpot functionality. So think uh, tables, charts, uh, vises, you know, visualizations, uh, the actual uh, ThoughtSpot search, and even the ThoughtSpot app itself, and be able to embed that in your own application. So ThoughtSpot and the ThoughtSpot Everywhere uh, embeddable features are changing the game and how we get data delivered and how we uh, want to see our answers uh, inside of our own applications. So now what I did for the demo was create a little fictitious React uh, based application. We already have a few visas and I uh, added, added them already. And we're going to go ahead and uh, add some more from two different data sources. So one of the data sources is the CAN data set that comes along with ThoughtSpot. And it's the bunch of sales data. And the other data set is some Edgar uh, SEC court filings that I did. And uh, the Edgar data pretty much is, think about it, corporate filings, so like uh, end of year type thing. So think of 10K type documents, right? You're reporting all your corporate filings for end of year. So, and speaking of data sources, you know, when you go into the ThoughtSpot documentation, you're gonna see various roles that are referenced. Of course, the primary roles we tend to focus on are the business users and the business analysts. But other roles also come into play here, more like the data engineers, the data experts, and the ThoughtSpot data engineers, right? They have to come in and, set, and configure ThoughtSpot uh, to work on top of those data sets. Now, this whole thing is based around uh, all the data being housed inside Snowflake. Snowflake's gonna be our power engine, our uh, cloud data platform. And uh, we're gonna wrap this all inside of a data app. So let's kind of re really quickly define what a data app is. A data app for the most part is being able to take all these various pieces of data from different systems, uh, could be streaming systems, whatever it might be, different databases, different warehouses, and being able to put those all in one app so a person with a certain job function can pretty much go to one app to find everything they need to, they need to do uh, for their own application, right? For their own uh, part of their uh, what they do. <laughs> So, all right, and I found that uh, going through this exercise, especially uh, trying to add another data set that I didn't really understand into ThoughtSpot uh, was very beneficial. It kind of taught me how to um, go through everything uh, more meticulously. You kinda, you know, I, when stuff is already prepared for you, it's kind of easy to do. When you have to do it yourself, you get to see every single aspect of it. So, I mean, here that's what we do at HashMap NTT, right? We do a tremendous lot of data engineering. That's kind of the core of what we do. So getting that data set up, curated, and, and making it useful, that's one aspect. Then also getting into ThoughtSpot and engineering and configuring ThoughtSpot to be able to use that data is a whole nother concept. So let's jump right into our demo. All right, so for the demo, we created a connection to Snowflake. Remember, Snowflake is gonna be our, uh, our cloud data platform behind the scenes here. So I already created that connection because it takes a little while to uh, get all the metadata out of Snowflake. And the reason being is because, let me jump over to the connection real quick. When I create the connection, we're not just creating a connection to a database, right? I'm grabbing these four uh, tables that I want to utilize out of there. So a connection in ThoughtSpot is not just a connection to a data source. It's also, hey, what, uh, for th in this example, what star schema am I going to attach to, right, to try to use, try to harness for this uh, searching um, area. Here we go. So I'm going to go back to Snowflake. I'm going to kind of show you behind the scenes. So here's all the stuff it did. After I made that connection, you can see all the multitude of queries that ThoughtSpot is making behind the scenes to start analyzing this data, getting cardinality, um, number of nulls, right? All that kind of stuff it does behind the scenes to build that metadata it needs. And you can see inside the database, 
It's very simple. I have a TS demo database, court filing schema with a few tables, and I only picked four tables out of there. Let's jump back over here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and set these tables up a little bit. Now we're gonna use a worksheet for our actual uh, searching, but to use tables inside of a worksheet, I need to go ahead and join those tables together first. And you can see I have zero joins. And this is because I didn't create any primary keys or foreign keys, any kind of constraints inside the database itself. So let's go ahead and click on these. We're gonna do a couple of these just to kind of show you what I'm doing. And then we'll, then we'll go about um, setting up, uh, looking at the worksheet and setting everything up. All right, so let's go back here. Whoop. Go back to columns, there we go. And so inside here, you can see right away when I add a connection, it just starts going through all the data and it says, oh, I found, a, I found an integer. Well, these are IDs, these top two are IDs. So it's up to the kind of the, the thought spot data engineer, if you will, to come in and change these back to attributes. Cause I'm not gonna be uh, doing aggregations on these, right? These are actual ID columns. So let's take these off. And I'm gonna go ahead and set this aggregation to none on these columns. And if I was gonna, uh, do searching just on if I, allow, if I allowed searching on this table I would also probably come over and hide these two columns right because so, you don't need to see them and what I'd also do is change the names of everything right so inside here instead of having um, Y fiscal year which is the name of the column in the database I probably just have FY same thing for this one maybe RPT val something like that something easier probably what you would agree on with the business user right what they're used to seeing and we're going to go through a little more of that here in a minute on the worksheet so now the, the data, the actual uh, data object looks good, right? The integers are, then the keys are keys. Uh, the double, which is my measure, is, is truly a measure, and we can, uh, we are, we're gonna make it uh, use an aggregation default of sum. All looks good. So this one's kind of ready to go, and I could even change the name of this table of how I want to present if I really wanted to. Right? Instead of calling it this, I could just say, like, yearly reported values, something like that. Make it a prettier name. Again, this gives me, uh, so now this table set up, but it doesn't uh, allow me still to join to the other tables. I have to go and actually create joins. So it's very simple. You just come in here, and I know right away inside this uh, fact table, I'm joining back to two dimension tables. So this one is the company ID. I'm gonna go ahead and join back to company, and I'm going to say the company, ID, and it's a cardinality is a uh, many to one. Create the join. It takes a few seconds, again, behind the scenes, Everything starts working, right? Uh, ThoughtSpot starts running queries, analyzing what can be done with this and creating metadata to help out with the searches. So that's one, and right away you can see it built it. I have one more that's gonna come out of this, and that is for the tag. So I'm gonna point that back to the tag table, and the tag is just merely in the Edgar data set. Think of a tag as pointing to a value on, on a form. So somebody submitted a, a, a 10K filing and say their common stock value was this. That, this, that tag will say common stock value for this form. So it's kind of a way to find that data inside the form. There we go. Hit create join. And this should come back pretty quick. So now for the most part then, if I wanted to use these two tables, or sorry, three tables, I could, right? Because now yearly report of values is pointing back to company. So now I could use company attributes and I could use value tag attributes as well. I have one more, that's the industry one uh, that I need to do. But I'm not going to do that. And we're going to go through all these. I just wanted to kind of show you a couple of them because you can see if I went back to, uh, let's go back to, go back to industry. If I went back in here, you can see there's zero joins, right? There's no joins in here. If I look at the columns, and again, they're all still wrong, right? So I, I go in here and change this back to attribute, right? Do the exact same thing I did before, do this data cleanup or this data object or metadata cleanup. And what I would do though in here, if I was going to let you search on this stuff, and I would probably office and industry since those are very limited lists maybe a couple hundred i would go ahead and say i want to index uh everything about it the whole substring right and we're going to show you some of these inside the worksheet as well so there you go all good right and i would save this off and again so i do this and probably change the names of the columns as well right i would do this for all of my columns for all of my tables and make sure everything's right from a metadata point of view then what i would do when i'm all said and done i'm gonna to go to the one we already have created I would go to my worksheet, which is this one right here, the one we're gonna use. And you can see on joins, everything's already done. There we go. And I can even see on my columns, I read it all the column names, right, to be what I wanted. And, um, and you can see there's no, there's no table references. Everything's just by column. And then now it knows I, I'm able to choose all these columns. When I created a new worksheet, I was able to choose all these columns because I joined them all together. So now behind under the hood, right, ThoughtSpot knows, hey, I can go find all these because of the relationships. And I added one more thing here. 
uh, the synonyms. So I created two more synonyms. So what if I had two or three business users that are using this data set, right? And running query and running, not query, sorry, running searches on the data set. Uh, only one may know RPTY value. Maybe that's how they term it. Uh, the other teams may call it filed value or court filing, right? So I'm with those synonyms. So no matter what they type, it's going to work for everybody. And they'll be able to type that in, use it, and all goes back to that reported you know, yearly value column in the database. So let's go ahead and do it. Let's jump over to home. And this is a course where we start building our searches and finding our answers. So I'm going to come in here. And before I get too far, let's go ahead and jump into our TS demo app to see what we're even supposed to do. So here's a little demo app that I built. Again, this is a React app and it's running right now. I have it running. Uh, my visual code is running right now behind the scenes. And I have a few, um, you can see the ones that are ThoughtSpot, of course, they say Power by ThoughtSpot at the bottom. And I have a few I'm already added. And I'm going to add one. So one's kind of still in development. One of these, um, we're, not, we're not sure how we're going to do this yet. So the West region is still being done. I uh, have some assets and we're going to replace this one. The first thing we're going to do is replace this one. At first, I was going to do some business with the cloud providers. So I went to that corporate filings data and I said, hey, uh, show me all their current assets for these top uh, cloud uh, providers, right? So I can see we have Google, Amazon, IBM, Microsoft, and Oracle. I can kind of see what they've done over the last couple of years, the last four years, their assets, kind of what they're gaining as a company. But I don't need that. I don't really need that anymore. I want to see all the filings by state because I want to kind of focus my areas on the states that make sense. So let's do that. We're going to come back to ThoughtSpot then. And I'm going to go ahead and do this. So I could use, remember now in our worksheet, I uh, changed a couple of synonyms. So I could use RPT, Y value, the one you see pop at the very top. But if I want to, I could also say corp filing. And that does the same thing. And we're going to test this out. So I can do corp filing. I'm going to say, I want to see assets current. That's exactly right. And then I want to see by state. And notice if I try to put by state, it's going to give me an error. ThoughtSpot catches this right away. It's saying, hey, you don't have a column or anything out there, a synonym or anything that says state, but you do have a CO state and it's exactly right. So instead of me having to type all this in and hitting go and having a big error show up on my screen, ThoughtSpot catches it right away before I even, uh, before I even start to search. So pretty neat. So yes, I'm going to say by state, uh, by, uh, sorry, CO state. Then I'm going to say, go ahead and give me uh, last year. All right, let's hit enter. We're going to run this. And this is exactly what I wanted to see. Not sure about the purple, but hey, that's okay. And you can see when I put in last year, I didn't have to go type in, okay, show me the data between this. I just put last year. So it said, okay, I'm gonna go build you a between that says between 1-1 of 2020 to one uh, less than 1-1 of 2021. So pretty neat, get the entire year's worth of data. This is great, but it's still kind of hard to view. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to sort this descending so that all of my big players stack up on the left. And there we go. So if I look, I can see, now this is uh, all the assets for a company, right? And this is where the company is based out of. So I can see in California, that's huge, like 1.3 trillion. Next up is Texas, right? And you see all, of them. so now I can say, hey, maybe the players I'm gonna look at for my marketing uh, campaign or whatever, they're gonna be in these, in these states. All right, so this is exactly what I wanted. I like what I'm seeing. Uh, maybe I wanna save the answer, maybe I don't. If I wanna save this answer to be used over and over again, I could very much do that. I could come in here and I could say, save. And I could type me in an answer name. Let's say, I'm gonna say total uh, assets by state uh, last year. Let's do that. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and save that answer. Now it saved the answer for me. And I can actually see that answer. Now, if I come back over here to answers, I'll be able to actually see that answer. Total assets by state last year. And there we go. I can pull it back. And if I want to pin it, so I have an Edgar uh, uh, pin board, and they're calling them live boards now, but it's still called pin boards in the interface. So I'm going to go ahead and pin it. It just asks me what I want to pin it to. I'm going to go ahead and pin it to that Edgar data set. Hit pin, and now it's pinned. If I want to go see it, I can go to my pin board section and go find my, oh, right at the top, Edgar data. There we go. Now I can see the old one that I had on the left and the new one that I just created on the right. All looks good, right? So now, remember, I want to replace that in my app, though. I had that data app, and I want to replace this. I want to embed this in my app. Uh, so I can do this two ways. First way I could do it, if you know, kind of the trickier way, is to say, come over here and say, copy embedded link. And I can come and take these, this grid, this last grid here is, whoop, right here, this last grid is the uh, actual answer uh, uh, key. 
and the grid right in front of it is the pin board it's uh, associated with. I can do that, or if I really want to kind of see it in action, kind of see how it would look, I can go back to the develop area and kind of test it out. So I can click on visualization, or viz, I'm sorry, I'm saying that word again. I'm going to click on Edgar data, and I'm going to go ahead and choose top uh, assets by state last year. And let's make sure it all, oh, I hit a run down here at the bottom. And you can see there's various things in the JavaScript there on the left that you can set up. And for the demo here today, I didn't do a whole lot. I pretty much just said, hey, whatever I created, just stick it in the app. And let's see how it looks. All right, perfect, exactly how I want it to look. You can kind of see it's like a, it puts it out of a mocked up application. So all I have to do in my application, I already have my code set up to use uh, ThoughtSpot everywhere. So I can just take this grid over here, copy it, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch screens to my uh, visual code here. I'm going to go back, I kind of had the wrong names here, but I'm going to go back and I'm going to change this one key inside here. Again, you wouldn't do this in real world, right? You'd have these be part of a uh, configuration mechanism. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. Now, as soon as I hit save and I go back to my uh, report over here in my demo app, look what's going to happen. If I refresh this, as long as I hit save, let's see what we got here. It's taking a while. Sorry, my machine's running a little bit slow. Come on, you can do it. And I have my dog barking in the background. He must be excited about something. Man, this is taking a while. So, sorry, guys, my machine, I can hear it humming. It's, uh, it's busy right now. All right, there we go. So just now we saw it. We just previously saw uh, the five cloud providers, and now we're seeing the new visualization that we just put in. Awesome. That's how fast I can get things in. But I'm still missing one here. I still want to get my West region going. Uh, and someone just told me, hey, I went ahead and fixed it. It's all ready to go. So let's go back into ThoughtSpot. I'm going to go back into my pin boards. Or let's go to Answers. And do I see West over here? No, I see East, but I don't see a West. So one thing we can do is if you, if you create an answer that you like and you're not, really, not, you're not going to really share it with anyone else, you can just go ahead and add that directly to a pin board. You don't have to, you don't have to save it off. So if I go to my DH cells, this is for me. This is my own pin board here. I can see it's all ready to go. It's exactly what I want. Um, this time I'm going to go ahead and cheat. I'm going to say copy embedded link. And I'm just going to take this grid from here. I'm going to copy. And I'm going to go back uh, to my application. Now behind the scenes, again, I'm going to have to switch screens here so you can see this. I'm just going to go back into my Visual Studio over here. And I'm going to paste that in. But you can see I'm missing my pin board as well because this is kind of a brand new thing for me. So I'm going to go back real quick. I'm going to grab the other visualization ID for my pin board. I'm going to put that in here as well. Whoop. All right, I'm going to save that off. And then I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to actually add that control into my my code here. So I'm going to say region west, I call it pi. And there we go. Let's hopefully, I don't have prettier turned on, so let's hopefully uh, see if everything compiles. It should. Yay, all done. All right, so let's go back out to my application. And it's loading up right now. You can see it. And there we go, that fast. So here's how fast I can embed things using ThoughtSpot everywhere, right? They provide that entire toolbox so I can come in here and do whatever I need to do. Uh, so if I, like at this heat map, for example, oops, I was scrolling, my fault. <laughs> well, I do the heat map. So the heat map as well, think about it. If I had, if I, I narrowed my data set down to US-based companies only, but if I did have it to uh, hit, hit the world, right, you'd see it light up all over the place wherever I had data, right? So that, uh, that's one factor as well. But remember, on this data, I can do whatever I want. I can drill down into this data. I can say, well, show me product type inside Nevada. And there we go. I can say, hey, just show me the underlying data. So I can see the tabular data of what's, what it's looking at. And whenever I'm done, I can just jump back, right back, and just hit, there, I'm back to where I started before. And the same thing is for all these, which is why they're kind of calling them you know, live boards or really live uh, visualizations, right? Because I can interact with them. They're not just static. And I can keep digging. Like on this one too, say California. Let's say I want to do the same thing. I want to dig into product type. Even on this tiny viz, I can still go in and look at these things. Say, well, I want to see it ranked. I want to see what my 
uh, smallest um, my smallest product is right by sales so I can come in here and see oh we're having a problem with socks maybe maybe we need to do a socks marketing campaign in the West region so all these things I can find out and of course my assets are appearing just correctly so the last thing I want to show you is one of the most powerful things I think is that I can actually embed the entire search mechanism of ThoughtSpot everywhere well part of the ThoughtSpot everywhere package right I can embed the entire search into my application extremely extremely powerful so let's do the exact same thing I did before but this time let's uh, let's change the name so I said I think it was called filed value is that what I use uh oh I messed up oh what did I call it and I call one of those court filings oh you know what I just saw something I am in the wrong data set there we go see I have two data sets in this so let's go ahead and choose the right data set that was good I caught myself there there we go now I can see all my stuff coming back up so let's say I want to look at a uh, corp file oh, there it is and then what was the other one I think it was filed value there we go so I have a multitude of names that I can use right for this so I file uh, filed value and again I want to say the exact same thing I want to say assets uh, current exactly see so yeah, it's and that's also something about ThoughtSpot the more you use these attributes the algorithm gets better and better the more it'll start shuffling those to the top and so what did I have I said by state that's right and I said uh, for the last year let's just see make sure we get apples to apples here because now I'm running ThoughtSpot everywhere inside of my app inside of my data app and again I get the exact same stuff if I even want to look the same even inside here I could Go ahead and sort by descending, and I should get the exact same look. Of course, it's green this time, but still 1.33, exact same stuff. So I'm kind of able to say, hey, for the, for my new market, uh, I have California in my west region, right? What else? I have New York over here, so I can kind of look at my, my east region. I can kind of start figuring out where I want to do my marketing uh, campaign next. So pretty neat. Uh, very impressive. I'm so impressed with how they did things. And again, behind the scenes, this is all running under Snowflake. Everything is running extremely fast. Uh, the slowness you saw is really from my machine. Sorry, it's very busy right now. But the great thing about it is, is all the different avenues within, side, uh, within ThoughtSpot that I can utilize. Uh, again, I just want to harp on the development area, the playground that you can do. The re you can go test everything out. You can uh, even, remember, we talked about things you can embed. I can embed pin boards. That's one of the things I want to do next on, my, on this test app is go embed an, an entire pin board. So create an entire pin board and embed the entire thing. So overall, very impressed, uh, love the product, can't wait to use it more. All right, um, we are coming up on our last couple of minutes together, but I just wanted to give a quick thank you to Matt and David for joining us today. Um, I'm going to drop my email in our, in our chat here since we don't have time for a live Q&A, but if you have any follow-up questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. My email is vika at thoughtspot.com. If you have questions for Snowflake or HashMap, I can help you route you from there. Um, then our final slide, um, you know, if you found today's demo or, or anything that <laughs> Matt and I had talked about interesting, um, we encourage you to sign up for a free 30-day trial of ThoughtSpot. Um, you can just visit thoughtspot.com slash trial to sign up for that. Or for the developers in the audience, we also have a developer playground available for you for free at developers.thoughtspot.com. Um, thank you all for spending the last 45 minutes with us.